So hello and welcome to another nostalgic run. Today we're doing the Tempest Keep, the Eye. Now this is more well known or better known raid from the Burning Crusade because of the ashes of Alar Mount, which people farm to this very day, including me. Now the Tempest Keep, tier five raid, released after Serpent Shrine Cavern. And people like to refer to this raid as the Guild Killer. I would not refer to the raid as a Guild Killer. I, I think Kelthas should be labeled the Guild Killer. <laughs> Kelthas the Sunstrider, the last boss of this raid, was a nightmare of a boss. And if you think uh, Mythic Black Hand took a long time to down by method, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was a couple of weeks, like a week or two. Kelthas stood tall and proud for months uh, without being defeated. And that's no joke. After Kelthas was released, it took the first guild something like two months to kill Kelthas. Two months. I like to call him the Cthun of the Burning Crusade. Now, the first boss is Allah. And you might think that he drops the mount. He does not. Kelthas drops the mount. Now, the strategy for this boss was fairly simple. You have these little platforms that kind of go out from the outer ring. And that's where you would tank him in phase one. You would tank him here, then he would move over there, then he would move over there, and he would move over there. Um, if no one was in melee range, he would do raid white AoE. Which meant that me as a tank, I would stand over here. My off tank would stand over there. After my off tank got Allah and started tanking Allah, I would run over to that side and once I taunted Allah or he moved there, my off tank would run over there. So that was the first phase. Nothing too complicated. In phase two, well, he would spawn adds and do weird shite. But he wasn't too difficult. He wasn't too difficult. If you knew what you were doing, it was fine. Now you might think that, oh no, he despawned. He did not. Uh, <laughs> We just need to go over here, and because he's a phoenix of sorts, there he is. Bloop! And we... that was actually kind of dumb. There's the um, Braid Wide AoE. It's a flame buffet, and it would stack up. It would, it would do increasingly more damage, and healers would just not cope with it at some point. So you always had to have someone in melee range. Would, as I say, he would spawn adds. And he was... I liked him. He was a lovely boss. Uh, he gave me as a tank something to do. I was constantly running around. And I loved that. So that was kind of cool. But, you know, many guilds <laughs> were stuck on this guy because they didn't have the coordination. This boss was all about coordination. And if you did not have that, well, you were kind of screwed. Now, moving to the next boss. And I think we will do... Mm. Void Reaver? I guess we will do Void Reaver. And while we were running over there, Void Reaver had a very specific strategy to him. He would bring as few melee DPS as possible. And that was pretty much it. He <laughs> was a nightmare for melee. And I do believe that was because back at when we were progressing him, Melee players were required to have a resistance set because he would do some AoE on melee, I think. Might be wrong. I think he would do some AoE on melee and that just wasn't really healable with the gear we used to have. So they would have to have a resist set. I don't know which resist set. I think it was Arcane or something like that. Maybe? So they would do bugger all damage. Right, so you would have one shaman, one enhancement shaman in full resist gear, standing there, giving tanks totems, and that was pretty much it. That was all the melee you could bring. And I'm picking up shit. I don't have the space for it. Let's just throw some stuff out. Now I want to clear this. Because normally I just pull him, everything pulls with him, and I just AoE it down. But I want to kind of talk about what you were supposed to do to kill him. What was the strategy here? So you see the, the ring, this inner ring. Well, what he would have is he would stand in the middle, 
with a tank. And then around this ring, you would have your ranged and healers. And the setup we used was healer, ranged, ranged, healer, ranged, ranged, all the way around. Now, there's a reason for that. He threw some sort of a crazy ball. That ball was pretty fast, and it was very inefficient to actually try and run away from it. So you would space your ranged and healers far enough from each other, so they only one person would get hit by the orb, essentially. And healers would just heal him up. If he got hit twice in a row, that would probably kill him. <laughs> but healers were usually just all right with that. You know, they were just healing people, and he wasn't too hard. Um. You were able to kill him. This was a 25-man raid, so you were able to kill him with sort of 18-ish people. I think we once killed him with like 21 people because we just didn't have the four people to go here and do it. So he wasn't very hard. But the strategy was just stand around in the ring and uh, just move away from the balls. I don't know. what the There it is. That's it. Right there. Arcane Orb. It would silence you. That's right. I think that's the that ability as he pounds the ground that does damage but I don't know what kind of damage that is let's actually check it out yeah. pounding yeah arcane damage okay so that's what he would do and as a melee it would hurt a lot <laughs> it would hurt a lot so you had to have that arcane resist set to deal with that and that's pretty much it I already have everything and he did sad face whoop Smack. There we go. Now, if I sound slightly less enthusiastic, um, it's because I was walking around in my basement and suddenly felt a sharp pain through my leg. And I've realized that a very sharp twig has made its way through my boot into my foot, so I currently have a hole in my foot. <laughs> so, yeah, I might sound less enthusiastic. Now, before we do Kel'thas, let's actually do the other boss. I forgot the name of her. Let's check it out. I'm uh, missing something here. Where is it? There we go. Tempest Keep. Tempest Keep. And Hi Astromancer Solarian. Okay, that's her. That's her name. Boom, boom. Nah. By the way, if you're here, don't try to chain pull the trash. It's not worth it. <laughs> they have a mind control. So if they mind control you, everything resets. Alright, so don't cheat pull the trash. Pull them pack by pack. Don't be a dumbass like me. <coughs> okay, we're going through Kelfas's room. Which is a big bloody room with a statue of him on each side. There we go. There is Kelfas with his bodyguards. <coughs> so Yeah, let's go to the Astromancer's room. Now, Kelfas you know, people, as I've said, people like to call this raid the Guild Killer. That's not true. Kelfas was the Guild Killer because he just was so stupidly hard. He was like really hard. And it was a long bloody fight. It was a long bloody fight. It was annoying at times, as a tank especially. Because, well, <laughs> he was just standing there for most of the time. Just like, mm, okay, when can I do something, please? So that was kind of annoying for tanks. But as a tank, you did two specific things in that fight. So as probably most of you know, he drops legendary weapons that help you fight him, right? He summons them to attack you, you kill them, or you defeat them. You can't really kill a weapon. <laughs> and um, <coughs> then you use them to fight Kel'thas. By the way, there is a ton of trash perps in this raid. I'm kind of surprised I only got one, I think. But there is a ton of trash perps. Now, if you don't have high deeps, you have to run around and kill all of those. Because they have mind control. I think it's the scryer that does the mind control. So that's kind of annoying. Now, this chick, well, at the end, she will turn into a void walker and start hitting like mad. But... She's kind of the Baron Geddon <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> of the Burning Crusade. She will place a bomb on you after the bomb expires and explodes. And you will fly up into the air all the way to the ceiling. And if anyone is around you, well, they did. 
<laughs> so yeah run away if you're the bomb was essentially this boss and then nuke her with bloodlust once she is a void walker so let's smack her in the face there we go I'll try to not kill her oh that's actually dumb kill her and my control <laughs> there it is <laughs> almost forgot almost forgot now what she would do is she would do arcane missiles it wouldn't hurt that much this this ray was kind of weird right where in serpent shrine cavern some of the bosses were really difficult here it was okay until kelthas <laughs> you kill ala which wasn't that hard if you had the coordination you killed void reaver if you know where where you're supposed to stand and you have your melee with the arcane resist set in the beginning at least after that healers just overhealed it and then you would get to this chick well she wouldn't do much if you can run away with the bomb debuff you're fine then you go to Kelthas and suddenly you heal, hit a massive wall made of poisonous and venomous spiders right so I think venomous spiders are venomous right not poisonous now I, I have completely forgotten poisonous if you yeah venomous spiders are venomous dumbass <laughs> <sighs> My foot is broken and I can't think properly. That's fantastic. <laughs> so you would you would hit this wall made out of hell and you would just be stuck. You would be stuck because this boss just was too damn hard. <laughs> I remember wiping here for months and I do mean for months, right? It took us, I think, three months to kill Kelthas. That's ridiculous. And we were one of the first guilds on the server to do so. It's like war the server, what, second or third. And it took us three months to kill him, so. The strategy for Kelfas. It's a bloody long fight. Bring a snack. But he will send his bodyguards after you. Now they are annoying. And nowadays you want to kill them in the same spot pretty much. But before, when it was actually relevant, you would space them around the room. I think this guy was over here, this guy was over there, this chick, I think we left her over here, and this guy was all the way over there. Now we used to we use three tanks, maybe? Oh, sure. blah, blah. oh, I should have taken Bladestorm. Oh, can I? No. Oh, no, I should have taken Bladestorm. I'm going to be stunlocked to all hell. Oh, no, God, that's going to be annoying. <laughs> Now there's a lot of talking in between every dude, you can see, and dead. Ugh, blood elves. Uh, yeah, it's her. And this dude. Yeah, they ha they all have really annoying debuffs. That that's I think why we used to kill them all over the place and why we had three tanks. Also because of this. No. Okay, that's not it yet. <laughs> that is not it yet. Um, smack. He resurrects them all at once. So if you had them at the same spot, well, that was a bad thing. So over here, bow for hunters. Pretty good. The best bow at that time. You couldn't have anything better. Now, the school friendly targets of the caster's heal gain an effect that reduces damage taken by fire and shadow spells by 50% so there was some sort of a debuff or something and you healers had to heal a certain people with that debuff or something like that I'm not quite sure this was just for deeps now this thing shields the caster absorbing 43 damage nowadays and making the caster immune to fear and snare effects for 4 seconds I'm gonna pick that up now the other thing is, increases the magical damage taken by the target by 5%. The spells bring Keltas' mind control and melee with a, when a melee ability lands. So, as a tank you would either have a shield or the dagger. So you would run around, you would break mind control. Or you would run around with the shield. So with that, we're going to equip that. Right? Use shield the caster. So, I then have to use it, which is a pain in the arse. But when he, once he, um, it's actually the same skin as my shield. 
so when he resurrects them I will use this because he will fear and snare every they will use all their shit crowd control at once on me and that's annoying there we go here they come here they come here they come there we go use that and shit, they blew me away the first thing they do uh, this boss this uh, I remember the fear oh my smack do something do something there okay good I pressed it too early so now we fight Kael'thas <coughs> He's like, oh no, oh no, you you didn't, oh you no no you didn't, and then we're gonna fly. Now, <clears throat> what you would do during this flying phase is there would be orbs floating about, and you'd have to <coughs> uh, avoid them. There you go. Very very cool. Very cool indeed. He's all pissed and stuff. He just goes mental. <laughs> there you go. And now he's floating. So, come on. Oh, I can't fly. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. I kind of skipped that, I guess. And he did. Mount. Please. Mount. Shit. Oh, well. <laughs> no mount. <sighs> Annoying. <laughs> Years have passed and still no mount. So that's it. That's Tempest Keep. I think you love watching. Bye bye.